Today we'll improve the acoustics in the studio from this How This Room Sounds Untreated to this. So now we've treated the room. The RT60 has probably dropped from 700 milliseconds. Well, you'll have to watch and see what it's dropped to with just this simple treatment. Welcome back, I'm Kevin, and in today's episode, we'll be discussing the acoustics of the room I've chosen to be my project studio. Now, I also wanna call out that many of the improvements I'm making here today can be applied to a home office where you're taking Zoom or conference calls. So let's get into that. In episode two, I covered the four zones of the control room. I walked through using acoustic measurement tools, REW and AMROC, and I also detailed how the data I capture with these tools will inform my approaches to treating the room. So in this episode, I'll measure the RT60 of the empty studio, review conventional placement of absorption, and install those panels. And then I'll measure the room again. Using plan, do, check, and adjust, I'll assess the acoustic changes and look for new ways to further improve the room. Now this room that I've chosen to be my project studio used to be a bedroom and it's located in the center of our house. So to ensure the efficient use of my time and resources, I measured the room, put it into SketchUp. This made it easier for me to visualize the room along with any obstructions like doors and windows and electrical outlets, locations of the absorbers or the monitors, mixing position, and any lighting in the room. This virtual model really helps me understand and plan all the changes that I'll be making to the room. My goal with this project is to ensure this room meets my acoustic requirements. Like most musicians, I wanna maximize the return on my acoustic investment while minimizing the impact on my budget. So before I purchase, build, move, or update anything, I wanna take a quick baseline assessment of this room's acoustic properties. I wanna make sure that you can actually hear this room untreated before we move on to actually treating it both with absorption and then eventually with some diffusion. So this is what the room sounds like, me about mm, two and a half feet away from an omnidirectional mic in the center of the room. That's one of the best ways I can share with you how this room sounds untreated. So let's review the meaning of RT60. I cover this in greater detail back in episode two, so if you need more information, you can always go back and watch that video. RT60 is the time a sound impulse decays from its peak amplitude, 60 decibels. The example is a 100 dB or 100 decibel sound dropping to 40 decibels or 40 dB, and we measure the decay time in milliseconds so using that measurement, we divide the frequency spectrum into 26 one third octave bands. And we know that each octave will have a decay time in milliseconds. So everyone's room acoustics in RT60 will be different given their unique situations. However, my RT60 goal is 250 milliseconds across all those octaves. To analyze my room, I capture the untreated room's decay time for each octave using a speaker, an omnidirectional microphone, and the REW software playing a frequency sweep tone. I'll save the first sweep as the acoustic baseline. Now here is the resulting plot of that baseline sweep. I can see the RT60 for each octave ranges from 500 to 750 milliseconds. However, I'll call the average around 625 milliseconds. The mid frequencies between 500 and one kilohertz are all above 700 milliseconds, which makes speech and music hard to hear or it lacks clarity within the room. This is because the sound energy in these octaves continues to bounce around the room due to the lack of absorption panels. Most importantly, this plot identifies each octave I need to address with some corrective actions. So before I make any holes in the walls or absorbers, I want to cover control room design.
There are many theories, laws, and equations when working with acoustics. I recommend you do a lot of research and decide what is best for your unique situation and budget. You can find on the web many control room designs in use today. However, I've chosen the conventional wisdom of the live end, dead end design. As the name implies, the room is divided into a dead end and a live end. In the dead end, sounds are less reflected due to more absorption, while the live end, sound energy is reduced but remains bright and reflective. So within the room, there are five areas where absorptive materials are placed. The first area is the front corners. I'll do this to soak up any low frequency buildup since this is where the lower modes have the most energy. The absorbers will correct for the RT60 in those octaves above the Schrader frequency for the room. The second area is the first reflections. Panels are placed on the right and left hand walls between the desk and the mix positions. These absorb indirect sound energy from the monitors that would reflect off the side walls. If not treated, these delayed sound reflections would return to the mix position and diminish the clarity of speech and of music. The third area is called the clouds. Like the first reflection absorbers, panels are placed on the ceiling above the desk and mixed positions. These absorb indirect sound energy from the monitors that would reflect off the ceiling, the desk, and the floor. So if not treated, these would return to the mixed position and diminish the clarity of speech and music. The fourth area is on the rear sides. Panels are placed here to minimize reflected sounds bouncing around the room and any modes that may exist between the two parallel walls. And the fifth area is the back wall or back side walls. Absorbers are used here to reduce sound energy while retaining some reverberations to maintain a more natural reflection or a brighter live sound. I'm adding two curtains and a thinner carpet here to reduce upper frequency modes between the floor and ceiling. As a sidebar, this area also utilizes diffusion panels, but I'll cover that and add the diffusion panels to the room in a future episode. So to summarize, I'll be placing nine two inch absorber panels, a carpet, and two one half inch thick curtains in this room. So now we've treated the room. What we're hearing now is we're hearing a more boomy, a little bit more low end. That comes naturally as you begin to treat the room. The two videos of me talking in the room both before and after installing the absorbers emphasizes the stark contrast in the quality of sound and clarity within the room. So with those absorbers in place, I'll capture the treated room's RT60 for each octave using the same REW software, tools, and process. This time I'll save that suite labeled as absorbers. Analyzing this new plot, along with the baseline plot using REW's overlay mode, the differences in RT60 per octave is impressive. You'll notice the drop in RT60 for 300 Hertz and above is now averaging 250 milliseconds. Quite a difference. Considering the difference between the baseline RT60 average of 625 and the current RT60 average of 250 milliseconds, I achieved my goals using these absorptive materials. However, this work has identified a new challenge within the room. While there has been a decrease in RT60 for octaves below the Schrader frequency, I can now focus on using bass traps to further improve the RT60 that's between 60 Hz and 150 Hz. So in the next episode, I will address this new low-end challenge that's been identified through my PDCA process. To achieve that, I'll be installing two acrylic diffuser bass traps that I built on the back wall. Then I'll build full height corner base traps on the front wall. Lastly, I'll open the topic and cover in detail the cost benefits of treatments, kind of referring to DIY it versus buying it off the shelf. So until next time, 
Thanks for watching.